Jeremy, how are you doing? I'm 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 just soaking up all the wonderful images in your background. <laughs> my my pop culture wall extravaganza. <laughs> yeah, your nerd corner. I like it. Thank you. That's a better way to say it, actually. <laughs> um, that said, with effect, that's not like mocking. I, I know. All like... <laughs> I, I I actually completely understand. I completely understand. I uh, I I appreciate that. Um, thank you so much for the time. The Yeti, the Yeti spread. Pardon? Oh, my pleasure. Oh, I was saying you're, you're the Yeti. That's the Bumble. Yeah, not Yeti, but it's the guy from. Uh, yeah, it's the Bumble. It's the Bumble. I don't from know why I call him Yeti, but I knew I knew he was Bumble. I don't remember his name? Yeah, from Rudolph. One of the great villains the of, of the 20th century. <laughs> he's like he's like the, the claymation version of of Sloth from the Goonies. Yes. That's a good comparison right there. I love it. You know, speaking of villains, Daniel's Gotta Die is a blast. It is so oh, funny. Um, what, what made you want to tell the story? Where did it come from? Yeah, I didn't write the script, um, but I'd always wanted to make a big, bold, dysfunctional family comedy. Uh, and what I really liked about Matthew's script that I thought did something that I hadn't seen in that genre before was that it kind of upended the typical route, which is I think most of the times we see a dysfunctional family comedy and we're like, well, they're all going to come together at the end. Somehow they're going to, you know, get through their differences and mend fences. And because oh, at, at the end of the day, family trumps all. And that never and it's not to say I don't have massive family issues. But I think that's kind of bullshit for most people. You know, I think sometimes your family just sucks and you have to create your own family or or deal with them, you know? And so what I liked about this script was that it didn't, you know, where most films of this type zig, this one zagged. It really does. It really does. And I love that about it. You know, you're right. There's, you know, without saying too much, the the way this wraps up is atypical, shall we say, for for these sort of dysfunctional family dramas. It, it really is. Um, and, and I have to say, um, in many ways, like this is, and, and am I right? This is the last film of Bob, of Bob Saget that he's in. Mm-hmm. in. In many ways, I think this is almost a more fitting finale for him than than Fuller House or anything of the like because of, you know, his style of comedy, but what was it like working with him? Yeah, I agree. Like, it's, it's more of a tribute to the kind of performer Bob was in his heart, in his dirty, filthy heart, which I love and miss dearly. Uh, working with Bob is a treat. He's just, he's just a, a performer. You know, he just wants it to be good or funny or real or whatever the money, the, the, the money, the, the, the scene dictates, right? Like, I think what Bob really enjoyed with this process was that, you know, we wanted to get some layers out of that character. We didn't want it to just be like a shtick, you know, uh, you know, because it could have been easy to just bring Bob in and have him do like the really dirt, dark, dirty thing. But, you know, I when I read that part, I thought, well, there's some layers here that I think we can play out. And I think, you know, we can let Bob do some stuff he might not typically get to do in most projects. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because he's such he, he's a guy who's known for almost two different careers, if you will, and and this sort of allows him to blend those worlds a little bit. Mm. I think it's 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 a fitting uh, fitting role for him. But uh, it's also it's a beautiful location. I was wondering where he shot. That's my backyard. That's <laughs> <laughs> really no, yeah. We shot we uh, uh, there was this thing called COVID. Um, and so the whole world was shut down except for this one little corner of the world called the Cayman Islands, hmm. where they were operating like nothing had ever happened. Uh, and because of that, our producers realized they had this opportunity where they could go and shoot a, a slate of films there. And ours was the first one of that slate. That's wild. That's why. So, you know, everything was shut down except there. Yeah, I mean, because for the Cayman Islands, there's only one way on and off that island is through their one airport. So yeah. they were able to basically, when COVID hit, they locked down, forced quarantine, and within a few months of COVID entering the world, 
it was not on that island anymore. Mm. And so um, when we got there, we had to quarantine when we first showed up uh, for two weeks. But then after that, like the only time, like there was no masking. There was no nothing like the only time you had to wear a mask is if you were on public transit or in a hospital or the airport. Wow. That's like another planet. Um, it was surreal, especially because at that point, we COVID had been around for about almost a year. Hmm. So it was a much it was a it was such a breath of fresh air to be asked. It was like, hey, do you want to go to a tropical paradise for two months and not have to worry about COVID? I'm sure it was hard to get people to sign up for that. I'm sure that, that was a real challenge. Um, you know, I, honestly, like I said, the film is so funny. Um, and and we talked before about dysfunctional family comedies or family dramas or what have you. Um, I was wondering in your mind, why is it such a why is it such a challenge to deal with our families? Why can it be? such a difficult thing to to set ourselves apart from them oh god how much time do you have <laughs> enough uh, <laughs> enough yeah i think it's because you know the old adage is you don't get to choose your family hmm. you know uh, and also i think you know in some cases maybe not necessarily in the case of this movie but you know a lot of the times you know there's things about the things that we don't like about ourselves are usually present in our other family members, right? And that is true in this movie, actually. And so I think it's just like, it's it's really, it's easier to like dislike a trait in somebody else that we also share, you know? Because it ref I know with my own children, like their worst habits are things that they've got from me. And, you know, and it's easier to try to correct them and correct their habits than try to fix my, my problems. <laughs> You know what? I have kids too, and you're you're not wrong. <laughs> Which is funny because the dad in this film has just given up. He's just like, nope, that's I'm I'm done. I can't even bother. Um, but you know, obviously, so much about this this film is is about is about money, mm. and and how money can tear families apart. What in your mind is it? about that i mean when when large sums of money get dropped into our lap i mean it can change people so quickly um but in this film we see it really really dig up some stuff i, I was wondering in your mind what is it about about vast sums of money that can can rip people apart uh, i think it just comes down to the value system mm -hmm. you know i think that's what separates daniel from his siblings right the money, like, you know, without giving away anything at the end, like the money is not really as important to him as connecting with his family is, you know, the, and that's that's part of the, the setup for the, the movie is the fact that he's in control of all the money. He could actually just walk away with it and never have to deal with them again. It's it's his choice to want to go through this process. Of course, he doesn't realize they're going to try to kill him over it, <laughs> but you know, he could have at the beginning of the movie walked away with this big pile of money, but that is not what matters to him, you know? And I think we see that in our lives. I think, you know, the one thing, what's the number one regret uh, statistically people have when they're on their deathbed isn't, I wish I had more money. I wish I spent more time at work. It's, I wish I would have spent more time with the people that mattered, you know, it's, which is something ironically that money doesn't buy you really. Mm -hmm. It's just something that you have to, in, in, in fact, it costs you money because you have to give up things to do that. Yeah, ab absolutely. I think it was Rockefeller that said uh, that somebody asked him how much he needs and he said just a little bit more. Um, it's like, which is a pretty good line, especially yeah. if, if your last name is Rockefeller. Um, but but uh, okay, so let's talk about Daniel here for a minute because he is so different I mean, his his fiance is is on the outside, of course, but in the member in terms of his family, he is entirely different. I think he talks about the frequency of positivity and all this stuff. Um, and but he refuses to believe that there is not good in everyone. So I would ask you the same question. Do you agree with him or are there some people that you think it's just not there? 
God. Oh, I want to I want to believe that I'm more like Daniel than like them. I want to believe that there's good in everybody. But I also kind of believe that for the sake of your own mental health or whatever, is sometimes you just need to remove yourself from forces in your life that aren't going to change. Yeah. You know, I also think there's a lot of bad things that happen to people who try a little bit longer than they should have to hold out and wait for those people to show that they're redeemable or to show and you know and not to say that you should ever give up on somebody but sometimes you have to ask your actually have to ask yourself does this person want to get better and change mm -hmm. you know it's different like giving up on someone who is actively trying to change is awful giving up on somebody who doesn't give a shit that's different that's a great point so what you're yeah, i mean the idea of somebody actually wanting to change for the better um may help give that extra extra push well then you can justify your energy but it's like if you're if you're gonna it's, a, it's like being in an abusive relationship yeah. you know it's a, if the other side isn't aware of it or or caring it's like oh you're you're just then it's just you you're just allowing it to happen and you're allowing yourself to be repeatedly punished for this uh and maybe it's okay to not yeah yeah boundaries for sure absolutely we need to have boundaries yeah. um daniel does not at the beginning of this film <laughs> he's got he's got to learn it the hard way but i think it's it's you know even though it's you know it's a heightened comedy i think that's true of a lot of us a lot of us put up with way more shit than we should yeah especially when it comes to family yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, there, it was it he says, he says something, I don't want to start a family, I have one. And he sort of is still locked in to this commitment to these people that have no interest in him at all. Um, meanwhile, he's got this wonderful woman who's sort of saying, well, we can build something new. And it's, uh, yeah. well, it's he fun. spent his lifetime watching those movies that always end where the family gets over their shit. <laughs> yeah. But it's real true. life, real life isn't a movie. <laughs> Not that this is, you know. That, well, I, I get the irony in that, but yes, you're right. This, this is not a documentary. Uh, this is not. This, <laughs> if it was a documentary, every single person in this movie would go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, honestly, the film is so much fun, Jeremy. It really is. What do you hope people take away from Daniel's Gotta Die? You know, I hope it, it gives them some laughter, obviously, but I hope it also helps them kind of look at their own situation, whatever it is, and and realize that there are might be certain people in their lives that are bringing them down that might not be worth the effort. You know, yeah. but and on the flip side of that, to you know, really lean into the people that are worth the effort. You know, the people that might not be our traditional family or blood relatives or whatever it is and to honor the relationships where people give back yeah absolutely that's when you the, those are the people you really feel like you can leave something behind too and i i don't mean four billion dollars or whatever the ridiculous number is but um absolutely jeremy thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it. the film is so much fun genuinely funny and i laughed a lot and uh, oh, good. appreciate it my pleasure have a great day. You too. Thanks so much. Thank you.